investigating a grisly murder committed in broad daylight in a college community. Just as shocking as the location, the victim, a professor and family man. And now his friends and former students remember this beloved teacher. Police struggle to piece together a puzzling crime. Who killed him and what was the motive? ABC's Matt Gutman has the mysterious clues. Okay, what, what's, he, what's going on with him? I don't know. The, the, the driver's side window is all bashed in, and he's got blood all over his head. A 911 call punctuating the morning call. A vivid description of Florida State Law Professor Dan Markell in his car dying. He's inside. I don't know if somebody tried to shoot him or if he shot himself or what. I don't know. This isn't the domain of gunshot victims, but college professors and family men like Markell, who earlier that morning had dropped his two sons off at daycare and drove home. There in his garage, left for dead until that neighbor found him checking on the curiously open garage door. Okay. All right. I'll be standing by, and I've heard about break-ins in the area, and so I decided to walk over and take a look, and the garage door was up and asked him what was happening, and then I saw the window was shattered. But Markell, a renowned law professor, wasn't robbed. A law enforcement source tells ABC News that the assailant waited for him in the driveway, then followed Markell into his garage. A single bullet hitting Markell beneath the jawline, but it didn't kill him. He's still moving around, so he's alive. Markell would die 14 hours later at Tallahassee Memorial Hospital, just a few minutes' drive from the house. The sandy haired scholar with an Ivy League pedigree leaving behind his sons, two and five. And a deepening mystery rattling this tight-knit community. I cannot imagine a person wanting to hurt him. I don't think any of his friends can. He's unforgettable. He very, very unique personality, just a lover of life. The big questions, just what happened to the conscientious professor and father of two? And who would want to kill him? We do believe that this was not a random act where he just surprised somebody. What we do believe is that Mr. Markell, unfortunately, was the intended victim. In other words, murder. The investigation begins with that 911 call. 12 long minutes describing the gruesome scene from a 72-year-old neighbor. And I came back over and his, wind, his, his uh, driver's side uh, window is shattered and he's battered and can't answer. And that first clue. Another neighbor telling police about a silver Prius speeding away. Nobody saw the person come or go. Maybe they saw the car. Is this professional? Is this a crime of passion? What do you think? It could be either a professional or someone who just wanted him dead who isn't a professional. We can't tell. Anybody could have gotten that access and committed this offense without being noticed by anybody. But it was noticed by someone, Markel himself. Multiple sources tell ABC News Markel was on the phone when he arrived home, remarking to the person on the phone that there was someone in his driveway. He did not sound threatened. We do believe that this was not a random act where he just surprised somebody. What we do believe is that Mr. Markel, unfortunately, was the intended victim. It's imperative for police to question the ear witness as much as possible. That person listened to this deceased professor moments before he perished, so every detail could become relevant. Then minutes later, that silver Prius seen speeding from the scene. A vehicle of interest, but what about a person? Harvard and Cambridge educated, Markell had a controversial blog, the Prof blog. Could this be clue number two? Just two days before he died, Markell posted a blog about the death penalty, the same website on which he received threatening comments in 2012. One commenter saying that Markel needed to be stopped by all means necessary. Is it possible that, that some of his scholarship and, li and literature uh, created some enemies? I guess that's as possible as any of the other scenarios. And there are several. Markel had been married to another eminent lawyer, Wendy Jill Adelson. Together they had those two boys, but their love soured, turning into an ugly divorce with squabbles over child custody. Friends telling us Markel described the day she left him as his Pearl Harbor. Adelson said through her lawyer that she is just devastated and scared to death. Police tell ABC News they questioned his ex-wife. Sources say it lasted for hours. But police say they questioned many who knew him. And the fact that there are no suspects, at least officially, that doesn't mean the police aren't looking at certain people. 
I hope that they have their eye on certain people and they're just not telling us. Only one witness could positively ID the killer, Markel, bleeding out in his car. You hear the neighbor in that 911 call urging EMS to hurry and told they were on their way. He better be if this guy's got a shot living. 19 crucial minutes would pass between the neighbor's call and paramedics' arrival, raising questions of whether or not Markel could have been saved. The dispatcher blew it. He screwed up. Had they gotten there earlier, we might have known more information from him, and he may have survived. On that 911 call, you can hear the dispatcher's confusion. I changed the look. The man who runs Tallahassee's dispatch center tells ABC News the operator didn't hear the caller mention the gunshot wound at first. On the onset of the call, it was entered into the computer system as a man down versus a gunshot wound. All of that creating a toxic brew of confusion and delay in the response as one EMS unit was replaced by another. And 19 minutes is a long time. We're making changes in this review to make sure that this atmosphere doesn't happen again. His blog once used to share his opinions, now a place for those who knew him to share their grief. Late this week, investigators increased the reward for any leads to $10,000, hoping precious clues might help unravel this mystery. For Nightline, I'm Matt Gutman in Miami. Thanks to Matt Gutman for that report, and stay with ABC News for the latest details on this developing story.